which I like, you know, but it also creates some anxiety. I was looking at our roster, I think we have, and you guys might know better than I would, Tracy, you probably have it in numbers, but I think we have 12 seniors and six juniors, six, maybe seven juniors, so we're awfully young. And so there's some anxiety in that, but I, but I also, at the same time, I like that, you know. Uh, so, you know, there's going to be some growing pains. Uh, we're going against a team that uh, we don't know very well, so that's another challenge. But I, I just think those are great opportunities for us to, to learn about ourselves, to get better. And uh, so I'm excited to see how we react. Having you know? been, been this, at this for a few weeks now, and does it get tougher or easier to, to maintain that focus the last couple of days that you've been? Easier because you're now you are actually focused on an opponent. The, the hardest week is definitely that third week. You know, uh, there's the, the game's still out there on the horizon. It hasn't arrived yet. You know, you're not preparing for the game. They're tired after two weeks of hard camp. This week, they're locked in, you know, and they're focused. I think the, the, the challenge is to uh, temper things early in the week so that you don't, you don't, uh, you, know, you don't shoot your wad too early. You know, and, uh, and 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 run out of emotion. So we just have to temper that. But I think I think they've been great so far. Does that pick up that locked in focus when like scout team jerseys start showing yeah. up and it starts noticing? Yeah, yeah, and you start game planning for an opponent. You know, for you're defensively, you're looking at plays and routes that are different than you've seen for all the spring ball and three weeks of camp. Or offensively, you're seeing different fronts or different blitzes, and you're learning players' names and their idiosyncrasies and, and uh, tendencies and things like that. So, yeah, it, your focus changes a little bit. It, it really narrows. It really narrows. Coach, being game week, I know you mentioned the team is young, but what are your biggest concerns this far along still with your squad? Oh, I have many. You know, how are we going to handle the environment on Saturday night? You know, I think we have a, you know, while I say we're young, I think we have a real great nucleus of veteran leaders and guys that have played. But at some key positions, you know, we've got some guys that haven't been out there under the lights against another opponent very often. You know, you look at, at our long snapping situation, our punting situation, those guys haven't done it. In the secondary, we've got some guys that have played, but they haven't played a lot. You know, so, hey, those are just, you know, those are challenges, they're concerns. I mean, it, it, it's, uh, it is what it is. We fight through it. I, I mean, I have a good feeling about those guys. I think they're going to be really good players. I'm anxious to see him perform on, on Saturday night. Have they seen an offense quite like they'll see on Saturday? I know Jordan was just saying they, they practiced against a little bit of the pistol a couple years ago, but never really seen much of that in a game. Well, we have not since I've been here, we haven't seen the pistol, and uh, we're not sure how much pistol they're going to be and how much spread they're going to be. So that offers another interesting dilemma for us is what we practice against. You know, we don't have preseason game film to go off of. We don't have practice film. They, didn't, they weren't nice enough to send us any practice film, you know. So, it's some, to some extent, we're guessing a little bit on what they're going to be offensively. And I think when you get in a situation where you're not exactly sure what your opponent is going to be, then you just have to make sure that you're fundamentally sound, that you stick to your rules, and that you play with great effort. How much pressure is on Brett Hundley going into this first game, or, or do you think there really is any? Ah, I mean, I think that there's always pressure. This game's about pressure and handling pressure. And we go come out here every day and try to create pressure situations for him. The thing about Brett is that he's shown an ability to handle pressure. Mm -hmm. When you look back at Brett statistically last year, one of the things that jumps out at you is the fact that on third down and in the two minute, he was at his best. And so those are high pressure situations in a game and he performed very well in those situations. So those are things that we can build on and then certainly there's some things that you know we need to improve upon as well. He needs to improve upon too. A lot of us here remember Cody, the quarterback in the bat when he was at Servite a few years ago and it seems like he's turned into a really good college quarterback, dual threat kind of guy. While you don't know exactly how much pistol or spread they're going to run, at least you know who the quarterback's going to be and you have some yeah. film on him, right? Oh yeah, we've watched him and he does some great things. I mean, he, I heard him compared to Colin Kaepernick and, uh, and then I watched some more film this morning. I said, I can see that, you know, I can see a guy who's physical and he's strong and he can run and he can make all the throws and you see him get out to his right and make a throw. You get him, see him get out to his left, square his shoulders and make a throw. You see him run the ball down the field. I think he's a really, really good player. I mean, and he's fearless as well. You know, he's not afraid to take a hit. He's not afraid to run it up in there. And he takes care of the football. I like him a lot. I think he's a really good football player. The fact that you use a lot of zone read, how does that help your defense prepare 
for the pistol and something like the jar. Well, at least it's familiar to us. You know, now they'll have some different concepts and we run, but just uh, understanding mesh points and who's got the quarterback and who's got fallback and who's got, you know, they'll run some option, who's got the pitch. Uh, it helps us, you know, but they, they have a little different flavor than we did. You know, they're motioning guys into the back field and running the option out of it. And, uh, you know, they're very efficient running it. When you watch them run the pistol, it looks pretty, you know. So we'll see how much of that they do as compared to, you know, the, the things that they've added to their offense with the new, with the new head coach. Coach, on your depth chart, you had Nate listed as a fullback. Um, can you explain that move or? I would put here's how much how much credence I put in the depth chart, none. All right. Okay. First of all, their heights and weights are wrong, and then, <laughs> and then I'd put zero credence in the depth chart. I only did it because they make me do it. So, is that true? We added a position, BY. You know what that is? <laughs> I would, if I was looking at the big Y, big Y. Yeah. <laughs> I would put zero, zero absolutely positively zero credibility into that depth chart because I put zero credibility into it when I fill it out. I'm sorry to say, right. I might get fined, I don't know, but it's just, <laughs> we have so many guys, like, for me, you know, when they, they list, you can have, I think I listed 13 starters or something, but, you know, they want 11 starters. To me, we have more starters than that, you know, like, because I look at, uh, whether it's Jordan Payton or Devin Lucian, everyone wants to say, who's the starter? In my mind, they're both the starters. You know, on defense, I consider a guy that comes in on nickel, whether it's to cover or to pass or, or play linebacker, I consider him a starter because he's a starter in that package. But unfortunately, they make you put this depth chart out, so I have to put something down. So I spend about 30 seconds and put something down. Was that your first and last in-season depth chart? <laughs> no, I think I think Steve will probably you know make me keep doing it. He's doing his job, and I'm just you know I don't mean to be misleading with it. It's just I, I don't look at life that way. So I think we've got a whole bunch of good players, and we try to fit them in where we can and play as many good players as we can every week. It's a tough putting Hunley at the top of the depth chart. That was that one, I think we could put some credence into that <laughs> okay, one. Yeah, I think we could put some credence into Anthony Barr at outside linebacker. So and, and I think the X, yeah, at left guard, I think there's some credence in that one. And, you know, but other than that, well, there's some others, but you know, you guys know we're going to try to play a lot of players, and if we play the number of plays we want to play on offense, then you're going to see a whole lot of guys playing. And, uh, you know, we rotate guys on defense as well. You know, you can't line up and play with just three defensive linemen when you're playing a tempo offense. It's as bad as a tempo offense. So, uh, I just listed everybody. They only went with the three deep. I listed it, like, you know, as deep as I could. I guess they ran out of paper. So, I think what's important is who play, you know, come to the game. It's incentive. Come to the game and see who actually goes out on that field. <laughs> Yep. All right. Thanks, everyone.